Over the weekend, Bitcoin rallied all the way to $42,200. And now many people, including myself, are talking about a $48,000 to $51,000 Bitcoin. And honestly, maybe even all-time high run relatively soon. Today, we're going to talk about why Bitcoin rallied, where it's going, and how you can make the wisest decision that will make you the most money profitably this bull market. So let's get into it. Why did Bitcoin rally all the way up here? Well, we talked about for about the last two weeks that Bitcoin had been testing a level called $48,400. And there's a par parabolic uptrend on the bottoms that indicated that we were going to test that resistance level a fourth time. We know from the principles of technical analysis that when you test a level of resistance more than three times, i.e. four or more times, you are almost certainly going to break that resistance level. That is a trend that I've observed over the last half decade of doing analysis on the markets. And pretty much every time you hit a level a fourth time, you will break it. We also had, as I said, parabolic uptrending bottoms. So they're getting higher and higher and higher. We're being pushed into that level. We also had a reversal on MACD and RSI indicating bullishness. And so we had a pretty strong indication that we were going to rally to between 39 and 41, with 41 being on the higher end. And so with a candle wick, we pushed up to 42.2. At the time of recording this, we're trading just above 41. The question now becomes, are we going to be able to establish a beachhead above $41,000 and continue the rally up to our next price targets between 48 and 51K? Well, we're going to look at this through the lens of the strength of the bulls and the bears and through the levels that we should look at. Let's first look at those levels. The levels that I'm most interested in right now for the next stop for Bitcoin are 48,051K. And the reason for that is very simple. On March 29th, 2022, Bitcoin hit a, a local high during the beginning of the bear market at $48,000. Many people believe that Bitcoin was going to attempt to go back to all-time high and it was going to form this giant ascending triangle pattern and it was going to blast off to 150. That's not what happened. Instead, Bitcoin fell from 48K and a few months later, we saw Luna collapse and Bitcoin began its descent all the way down to the high 20s. And the bear market was in full swing. It was the first major high of the bear market. $48,000 being the level that we had last tested as a local high is now the next level that we're going to look at on our way back to all-time high. And it also sits right next to 51, which is the 0.786 level on Fibonacci retracement, retracing from all-time high down to 15.5. So the current zone that we're fighting through, 39 to 41, is not done with yet. We'll talk about that in a second. But our next zone, if we are to break through here, will take us to 46. There's some highs there, but primarily to 48 to 51. From there, guys, it's all-time high. If we break above 41, uh, 51, uh, like a magnet, you're going to just get sucked up straight to all-time high and Bitcoin will be there very quickly. So we're only a couple of bullish legs away from a $70,000 Bitcoin. And once you hit 70K, gloves are off. Mainstream media is talking about it. You're seeing the thing go to 120 within a few months probably. And to be honest with you, with how quickly this is moving, it could happen sooner than we anticipated. I've been telling you end of Q3, we're hitting all-time high. But I've always had something in the back of my head that said, you know what, I think it may be faster than that. I try and be conservative with my predictions here on the channel so as not to screw over the noobs that, against my advice, will trade based purely on what I say and not necessarily actually think through their decisions for themselves. But I could not, I would not be surprised at all to see Bitcoin hitting all-time high even sooner than that, especially on the back of the ETF news. So back on topic. 50, 40, $48,000 to $51,000 is our next major level of resistance, next major zone of resistance. And so we need to talk about the strength of the bulls and the bears and whether or not the bulls and the, are strong enough to push us to that level. Well, whenever you breach into different sections of the market based on price, they're like different levels in a video game. And you kind of got to get a feeling for what that level's like. Like if you're playing Minecraft and you go to the Nether, you know what your overworld is like, but you don't really know what the Nether's like yet. If you're playing Mario and you go from World 3 to World 4, you get to the first level of World 4 and you're like, I don't really know what this world's like. What kind of monsters are there going to be? What kind of bad guys are there going to be? How's the platforming going to look like? Do I have to worry about water, lava, whatever? You got to get used to it. You got to build some market structure and you got to actually have something to go off of. You got to have something in your memory bank to say, okay, the market did this, so we can expect that that will happen in the future. Future. If you go to a different planet, you're going to have to kind of figure out a little bit about what the planet's like so you can make any predictions about what's going to be around the next corner. If you're on Earth and you go around the next corner, you're probably going to see something man-made or something green. If you go to Venus and you go around the corner, you're probably going to see a rock and some methane, right? You got to get a little bit of experience with the level that you're at to understand what to expect. And Bitcoin having just broken above 39 to 41, that's a new zone. That's a new level. That's a new world. That's a new dimension, whatever you want to call it. And above 41, we don't really know what to expect. We don't know what's around the next corner because we haven't seen enough of the market to actually be able to establish some trends. And so we need to be above 41 for a time to actually get an understanding of how strong the bulls are going to be here. 
The tricky thing is we're not actually really above 41 just yet. We're still caught up in the catchment zone of the 39 to 41K resistance zone. We broke very briefly above 41K, but we've kind of fallen back down to it. So Bitcoin actually needs to prove that it can establish a beachhead here above $41,000 before we actually start saying for sure that we're even in the zone of $41,000. We have to actually step out of the portal to use a Minecraft analogy, right? We actually have to start the level one on the Mario analogy. And so until we're actually sure that we're even in this zone, 41 to 48, we don't really know exactly what to expect up here because we haven't, we don't have any history. We don't have any market structure. So are the bulls strong enough to push to third to 48? Well, first, the first question that we have to ask chronologically is are the bulls strong enough to hold us above 41? Are they? I think so. I think that we will be able to establish a beachhead above 41 at this point. We've got a cross on MACD, cross on RSI. We already knew from three weeks ago that that was coming. It was likely going to come because of the reversal on the histogram and the bottoming out on the RSI. Again, for MACD and RSI, if you follow CT2A, if you follow the channel, you'll know. We look at the reversal on the MACD histogram and the bottoming out of RSI, not just the crosses, but the crosses have come and that's what gets headlines. So people are going to see that and be very bullish and think, aha, we have a cross. We're going to go into a rally. And so they'll buy and that'll be buy pressure and the bulls will be stronger for that. It'll add to their reinforcements. Um, and I do think that based on that, we have a strong likelihood of at least staying above 39 for a time. The question of whether we can go to 48 then is in, comes to mind because we have rallied $17,000 in 60 days. Bitcoin has increased in value by 60%. That might not sound like much to you, but when you put a number to it and realize that is $350 billion, two things ought to come to mind. Number one, it ought to come to mind and you ought to realize that the number of people wanting to buy Bitcoin is vast. That is literally hundreds of billions of dollars of valuation being created and being poured into the market in two months. The second factor you ought to consider is that no matter how vast those bullish reserves are, they are finite. And the market cannot rally forever. And so it's our job as analysts to try and discern how much more do the bulls have in the tank? What is the strength of the bulls? What do they have left? It would be so much easier if it was like an army and we can say, all right, they had 100,000, now they got 50,000, now they're losing strength, they're not going to be able to continue. It's not that simple. With technical analysis, you almost have to look at the shadows of the market to understand how big the army is. You don't get to look at the exact army itself because you can't just go and look at an aggregate of every trader and their net worth and how much money they have in their pockets. You can't do that. You can look at dry powder reserves and whatnot, but that's about the best view you're going to get into how much money the bulls have left because you also have to consider how much they're willing to deploy, and that is an unsolvable problem. The best we have is TA. TA is very good, but it's not perfect. And so can we go to 48? I think so. I think that there's enough bullishness in the tank that we actually may go up there. But first, before I say that with much confidence at all, because I say that with very low confidence, before I say that with much confidence at all, I need to see Bitcoin breaking through 41, staying up here for a time, establishing a beachhead, and proving that it is able to hold these levels for a while. I need to see it staying above at least 39 for a time to know that it is now on this new quote-unquote level, the 40s. We were in the 30s. Now I need to see for a time that we're actually in the 40s, right? We built some VRVP support down between 35 and 40. That's great. Let's see it hold. Let's let the market prove itself. If you're thinking about entering along right now, not sure that's wise. The long above 38.4 was the one we talked about. If you took that, good on you. Good job. If you're investing, dollar cost average right now, we'll get to that in a second, but if you're looking to go into a long right now, uh, it's a little risky. It might work out, but your risk to reward ratio isn't great. Does that mean that going long right now won't make you money? It could make you money, but it's risky. And with that, let me instead transition into how you will actually make money in this market and what I'm doing and what I am going to be doing more of. And that is very simply diversifying your risk profile over time and over assets so that you have mitigated risk maximized reward profile what do i mean simply put this is what i recommend for this coming bull market i've said this over and over again i'll keep preaching it until the cows come home or until bitcoin comes home to all-time high invest in a broad base of assets bitcoin eth ada sol xrp binance um avalanche polka dot chain link etc top 10 top 15 top 20 pick your coins generally buy just about everything in the top 20. I would exclude Bitcoin Cash. I'm excluding Bitcoin Cash. The rest of it, even Doge, yeah, buy some of it. How much? Don't just buy $1 of each one of them. Buy the amount of that 
asset roughly proportional to his market capitalization. Bitcoin's the biggest, put half of your weekly investment into Bitcoin, maybe. Again, all ideas, do what you will with it. Not financial advice, not your financial advisor, not an investment relationship. Just my opinion, and this is what I'm going to be doing. Peace, cool. Um, and buy those assets over time. Don't lump sum purchase them because you might miss a dip and you might not have any left. Dollar cost average every Friday. Yes, Friday, not Tuesday, not Wednesday, not Sunday, not Saturday, not Monday, not Thursday, Friday. Every Friday, buy that portfolio. An example of what it might look like might be $100 every Friday into Bitcoin. Let's make it something really, really small just so that everybody can do it or just about everybody can do it. Not everybody can do it, just about everybody can do it. 25 in Bitcoin every Friday, 10 in Ethereum every Friday, five into ADA every Friday, five into XRP every Friday, five into Solana every Friday, five into Dogecoin, two into Dogecoin, two into Sheep. Five into Chainlink, five into Polkadot, five into um, Avalanche, five into Chainlink. I think I said that already. Something to that regard. Buy that every Friday. Diversify your risk over time and over coins. That will mitigate your, your risk profile while also allowing you to basically invest in the first ever index fund in cryptocurrency, except you're the manager of it. So it takes more work. But then when you get to all-time high, one or two of those altcoins is going to go through a 1,000% rally. You just made a bunch of money. Good for you. Good job nice and then we'll turn around with dollar cost average out of that portfolio i'm hoping to make a lot of you rich by giving you that idea please actually do that again your decision not your financial advisor i'm not a financial advisor i looked into becoming a financial advisor but lo and behold i'm not allowed to talk about markets publicly and that's kind of my job so i decided not to become a financial advisor i would be on track to becoming a financial advisor right now if it wouldn't blow up the channel it's literally illegal to talk about markets the way that I do if you're a financial advisor. That's the only reason I'm not pursuing that right now is because I would like to be able to give actual financial advice. But this is not financial advice. It's just my opinion, and I think it'll make you a lot of money. And in a year, when you come back to the channel and you see, oh, Bitcoin's at all-time high. Jeff, what should I do? Well, I'll say, did you build that portfolio? Because now that you built it, I'm going to tell you what to do with it. So if you want to make a lot of money, there's your applicable for this episode. You've also heard where I think the market's going to go, what it needs to show me. And I also want you to know that you should sign up for the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy. Link in the description box down below because investing in your education is the best investment you will ever make. If you invest in your education of technicals, then you'll have a much better understanding of where the market's going and you will make back every dollar that you spend on CT2A so long as you apply it and you have an even small to medium-sized crypto portfolio. So make sure to invest in your education. Also, if you're looking to leverage trade, consider Apex Dex. Links in the description box down below. It's the Dex that I use when I do leverage trading. I don't do a ton of leverage trading, but when I do, that's where I go. I'm mainly an investor, but I do leverage trade from time to time. And when I do, Apex is my trusted exchange platform. You can check that out down below. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Hit the like button if you did. Subscribe if you're not already. We got a lot more content coming. Peace.